I'm going to build my iPlug plugin on Windows. So there are some prerequisites for this tutorial. Firstly, you need to have installed Git. Um, again, you can just download the zip file from GitHub. Um, I'm also going to use Python, which isn't installed by default on Windows, so you have to go and get that. Um, I'm going to be using Visual Studio Express 2010, and you can get that from the Microsoft website. So um, basically, just if you look in the iPlug examples folder, once you've got this repository from GitHub, you should find some instructions about how to set everything up. Just bear in mind there's uh, more things that can go wrong on Windows due to all the different paths uh, and the fact that things don't come built into the operating system. So first of all, let's clone this repository. I'm doing this directly into my C drive. So WDL OL. And like I did on Mac, I'm going to put some files in the various SDK folders. So VST 2.4. These ones. Now, on Windows, um, if I want to build the standalone app, I need to install the ASIO SDK and put it in this folder. Now, you can go and download these files from the Steinberg website, but uh, they're also included with RT Audio, which is the cross-platform audio library that I use to make the iPlug standalone wrapper. Uh, so it's a bit easier actually if you just download RT Audio um, and if you go in the include folder basically just copy all of this slot and put it in ASIO SDK right, Now let's do VST3 Now on Windows it's important that you keep a file, um, if you look here I've got a Visual Studio Project Base VC10. You need to make sure this doesn't get overwritten when you copy in the VST3 SDK. So I'm going to take everything here except Base, I'll put it in there. And copy that in there. should be enough. I'm not copying in that Visual Studio project. <clears throat> okay, so again I could extract the Pro Tools SDK into this folder if I wanted to build RTAS. So now I want to duplicate an iPlug project as I said before, you need to install Python, um, and Python can be a bit fiddly to use on the command line in Windows. You have to add it to your path or specify the the, to the complete path to the Python executable. Um, so I'm going to do that now. I'm in C in this command line. Um, I'm going to navigate to my WDL ol folder, navigate to the iplug examples folder, so when I installed git it installed uh, mingw and the um, you can see this is like a unix shell so it's very similar to using the command line in, in mac um, anyway now I need to run my duplicate script, but I haven't set this up as a path variable, so I'm going to type the root directory and the, the complete path to Python, which I know. Okay, so that's my Python executable, and now I'm going to put in the name of the script, duplicate.py, I'm going to type IP. 
plug effect, a new name, and the manufacturer name. Okay, so we've now got a new folder. It worked just the same as it did on Mac. And there's lots of uh, new newly named files and inside the files we'll find everything that was iPlug effect has now changed to my new plugin. <clears throat> so I think I can close this now. Close that one too. Now if you want to build Artaz plugins you have to use Visual Studio 2005 but uh, for all the other targets standalone VST3, VST2 um, you want to use the Visual Studio 2010 project so rather than opening the, the individual project directly you need to open the Visual Studio solution which contains all of these projects so it's this one, mynewplugin.sln You can see inside this solution we've got various different projects, three for the different targets and then these are some static libraries that we're going to load. Um, so let's build the app first. You want to write, oops I'm on the property manager here, I'm going to go to solution explorer. So you can see the, the one that's in bold, that's the active project and when we click build and run, or this one, F, F, or hit F5, um, it's going to try and launch the, uh, the project that's in bold. So if we compile now, we'll compile this app. This is compiling the libraries as well. With three succeeded. That means it managed to build the libraries plus the the project for the application. So now if I click build and run, it should run the program. And we've got our standalone app. And there's direct sound and ASIO drivers. Okay, so that was easy. Now let's try and build the VST2 plugin. So I'm going to right click the My New Plugin dash VST2 project and I'm going to say set a startup project. Now, if I build this, hopefully it'll work. Great, two succeeded. Two, now I'm going to click build and run. And uh, again, if you read the iPlug examples README file, you'll see I, when I debug plugins on Windows, I use VST host and I put it in program files. And basically, when I click run here in any of these example projects, it's going to launch VST to, sorry, VST host with uh, the path to my plugin. So I can press this button and it should fire up. VST host and it's loaded the, the DLL. So here we go, VST2 version. So unlike on Mac, the Windows builds actually build directly into um, this build-win-vst2 subfolder. So here's the vst2 DLL and if you look here we've got build-win-app here's the .exe executable <laughs> uh, 
and if we try and build VST3 okay good succeeded and for VST3 plugins I use the Steinberg VST3 test host so again you need to put that in program files So there we go, that's the VST3 version. So lastly, if you want to build 64-bit binaries, you need to make sure you've installed the Windows 7.1 SDK. Again, read the instructions in the README file about that. Um, and when you open the Visual Studio project, if you change this configuration here to x64, providing you've installed the SDK um, as described, the binaries that are built should be 64-bit. If you look in the build folders, when you build 64-bit, there'll be another folder here that's uh, for the 64-bit binary.